Hi there everyone, Josiah here with Womp Rat Creations with part two of the Beskar build. Now, last time I showed you how to create a two-part mold and then I made a couple castings of our Beskar. Now, I have, in the meantime, made a bunch so that we can get a couple different um, examples of painting techniques in this, but in this video, I need to show you how to uh, post-process a casting to get it ready for paint, and then I'm gonna show you um, my plan for painting this, which is really cool. I can't take full credit for it, but I think we're gonna expand on it just a little bit. So, first thing I need to do is take care of this. Now, from the last video, you guys know that this is the pour spout from where I uh, poured the resin into the mold to cast this. Now, I need to get rid of this because it shouldn't be there on the, I mean, it's fine that it's there now, but we need to get rid of it so that we can make this look like an ingot of Beskar. So for that, I'm gonna be using my Dremel. Now, this Dremel is, I use the Dremel Lite. I just like it because it's cordless. It has enough power for whatever, anything that I've used it for. And uh, so for this, I'm gonna be using a cutoff wheel attachment and then we're gonna switch over to a sanding drum. Now, when I'm using this attachment, I don't wanna to get too close to the actual bar. I wanna leave myself a little bit of gap so that I don't accidentally gouge the, our, uh, our casting with the, uh, with the cutoff wheel. So I'm gonna do just a little bit above where I actually want to, uh, to separate this. And then after I'm done cutting the bulk of this off, I'll go in with a sanding drum and, uh, and bring it down all the way. So I brought the pour spout down to be in line with the side, but because I used a two-part mold, I have a tiny little seam line that goes all the way around um, all of the edges of my Beskar. So I'm just gonna take some 220 grit sandpaper and lightly go over all the edges to make sure that we bring that down and you can't see the seam line. This doesn't need to be a super hard sanding. Luckily, um, I've made some molds that require a lot of post-processing, but because we got our master to a really nice level of, of uh, fidelity, there isn't much processing that needs to be done on the, uh, on the casting. Here we go. So, that is finished already. See, this is, this is why it's nice to have a nice master when you're making a mold, is it shouldn't take too long to, uh, to get your castings ready for paint. Um, the only reason that I've had an issue with that in the past is just my own uh, impatience, um, which is a hard thing for me to overcome, but when you can make yourself slow down and take your time and do the job right, man, it makes your job so much easier. All right. So, that's right. We have a couple pieces of Beskar that we're gonna be painting today, and that is the lovely thing about having a mold and being able to cast out of it. You can make a bunch, a bunch of copies, and process them pretty much all at once. That way, it just, it just makes things so much easier. So, now I have my paper laid out, and what I'm going to do now is, the first step in our painting is to get the base color on. Now, that is going to be a aluminum metallic paint. 
These have, uh, I've told you before that with metallic paint, you want to have a black base coat. But we don't have to do that because the resin that I use is already black. That is a happy coincidence. Um, if you're using a white or off-white resin, you could uh, use some resin colorant to make it black or even gray, but, uh, or you could just give it a black base coat. But because mine are already black, I don't have to take that step. So now I just, oh, it's right here. Perfect. So I am going to give all of these a uh, base coat of aluminum and I'm gonna let them dry for a while because like I've said before, metallic paints can be real tricky and I don't want to mess up the surfaces on any of these. So I'm gonna give these all a nice coat. I'll let it dry for a while. I'll come back and uh, turn them over, paint the other side, and then we can move on to the next step in this paint job, which is the cool one. I'm really excited. All right, all of my Beskar has dried and it's looking so much better already. Um, but now we can move on to the exciting part of this paint job and that is adding the Damascus lines onto our bars of Beskar. Now, once again, I have to give full credit to Brian over at the Smuggler's Room uh, for this method of painting the Beskar. Uh, th that, their video of painting Beskar uh, is where I found this method of painting and I love it. So thank you to Brian. Again, I will have their, uh, their video linked up here so you can go watch it. It's a great video and you should go watch it. Um, but thank you again, Brian, for sharing your knowledge um, with all of us. I really appreciate it. So now um, I have done some experimenting with this method um, and I'll take you guys through what I have found to be the best way to, uh, to get a fairly repeatable uh, pattern and um, uh, the best practices for this because there is a little bit of intricacy to it, but I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. So. The basics of this, it's essentially a form of hydroplaning, but it's kind of a poor man's hydroplaning. So I have a container here of cool water um, and a can of black spray paint. What I'm gonna do is spray the black spray paint onto the water. And uh, because this is cool water and this is a oil-based paint, um, it's not gonna mix. The paint is gonna stay on top of the surface of the water. So then once all of my color is in there, I'm gonna use a popsicle stick to gently stir it around just a little bit to create a nice pattern on the top of the water. Then I'm going to slowly dip my Beskar down into the water and then pull it out. And uh, you'll be able to see once I do that, that it's gonna have all of these really cool, very Beskar black lines on it. Um, now, when you take it out, you do not want to rub it dry with a towel or a paper towel or anything because you can mess up your painted lines. So I have my uh, blow dryer here ready to go to help dry it off once I take it out. And I've also found that there's going to be a few drops of water on here that isn't going to be got with the hair dryer. So I have some Q-tips here that I can use to pat it dry and that will be fine. It's not gonna mess up the paint job. Now, like I said, 
do not rub this dry with a towel um, because it will mess up your line. So you wanna make sure that you wait until it's pretty much dry to handle it after you take it out of the water. Now, the reason that you wanna dry this so quickly after you pull it out of here is if you let the water just dry on there by itself, it's gonna leave these weird patches. It's gonna look blotchy and you don't want that. So you wanna make sure to dry it off as quickly as possible with a hair dryer, maybe even a heat gun on a really low heat and you probably don't wanna have the heat gun very close, but a normal blow dryer does just fine. And then like I said, I'll follow it up with a little bit of Q-tips. Now, I know that might've been a bit much. Let me just show you guys. Isn't that cool? I mean, that it is so much fun. Now, I have I have all of these laid out here, and I wanna take you through, by the way, if you're gonna be doing this, you might wanna wear gloves. I've washed my hands, but the paint on my fingernails is a little more stubborn, so I'm gonna have to take some acetone or paint thinner to it. It's not a big deal, but if you're trying to avoid this, you can, uh, you can always put on a pair of latex gloves. But anyways, let's get to the results. Now, I did those dunks a couple of different ways. Um, that way I can show you, um, I mean, you can get a ton of different um, patterns out of this technique and it's a lot of fun to go through. But I wanted to, sh I did it wrong a couple times and I did it right once so that I can kind of show you uh, the different effects that you can grab with this. And if you are trying to reproduce the, uh, the Damascus pattern that, um, that I was shooting for, it can kind of serve as a troubleshooting guide uh, to, if you're not getting it quite right, you can look at these and see uh, what you might be doing wrong uh, to get it right on the next one. So we'll start out over here. 
This one, as you can see, is pretty dark and there's almost no pattern in this. Or, I mean, it's, it's pretty hard to see the pattern in this. This one had too much paint. I put too much paint into the water and, uh, and because of that, there wasn't enough um, water that didn't have paint on it to create any kind of discernible pattern. So this one over here is too much paint. The next one over is too little paint. There wasn't enough paint to uh, create any kind of streaks. So it just um, created kind of almost like a stippling effect. You can see there's a little bit of streaking in the bottom, but the rest of it is just kind of dots. Uh, so that is what I got when I had too little paint in the, in the water. The next one, as you can see, we're definitely getting some more streaking. Uh, and this one really isn't bad, but uh, I dunked this in the water vertically uh, rather than horizontally. And that gives you more of a uh, streaking pattern up and down. And this is fine, uh, but in my looking at the Damascus, or I'm sorry, the best car in the show, The Mandalorian, it seemed like all of the streaks were going more side to side than vertically. So this isn't bad, but it's not quite right for what I'm trying to get. Now the next one over, this is definitely more in the ballpark of what I'm looking for, but I plunged this too quickly into the water, um, which just created uh, a little bit, uh, it didn't give the paint enough time to uh, kind of vary its pattern over the, the bar of best car. So finally, the next one, I plunged horizontally and slowly. This gives us much more of the pattern that I was looking for. And this is uh, what I would consider a, uh, a good plunge for best car. So like I said, this is to show you the different effects that you can achieve with this hydro dipping uh, process and also to serve as a troubleshooting guide uh, if you are also doing this. You can take a look at these and see what variable you might need to change going forward for yours. But if you really like Beskar and you really want to get your hands on one, but you don't have the necessary tools or whatever to get this done, for a limited time, only while the mold is holding up, I don't plan on remolding my master, but while the mold is holding up, I'm gonna have these uh, bars of Beskar available for purchase on our website over at WampRatCreations.com. That's gonna be down in the description. So you can go check th those out. The majority of them are going to be this type of finish where it was plunged horizontally and slowly, which I think produces the most accurate pattern that I can achieve on these best cars. So go check that out. Thank you guys so much for all of your support and for tuning in for another Scratch Build. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Hey, look at you, you overachiever you. You watched that entire video and you deserve something awesome in return. You can head over to WampRatCreations.com. The link will be down in the description and you can pick yourself up some awesome Womp Rat Creations merch, just like this original Only You Can Prevent Imperial Invasions Ewok t-shirt. Thanks guys.